I've read hundreds of books on money and personal finance, and I've narrowed that list down to 40 books that I believe will actually make you rich. And I'm going to tell you the big ideas from each book that will actually make you big money. And every book isn't equal on the knowledge and will help you at different stages. So I'm splitting this video into different categories that will help you go from zero to 100,000, from 100,000 to 1 million, and from 1 million to $10 million plus. See, getting rich and making a lot of money is like building a large and beautiful house. You can set out to build the grandest home, but if that home is built on bad foundation, it won't stand the test of time and life. So that's where the first level starts, the foundation. In order to know how to become financially successful, you must understand how emotions and beliefs affect your financial decisions. In the psychology of money, you will learn how to not get sucked into copying what the wealthiest people in the world have done because they were just lucky. Take Bill Gates, for example. He was literally one in a million teenagers who had access to a school computer in 1968. He was fortunate, don't copy these people. Do what actually works by paying attention to patterns and not people. If a bunch of millionaires have invested in the index or mutual funds, then that's a better use of time than trying to build the next Microsoft. Thoughts become things. In Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, you learn that our thoughts create our reality. There is a very simple formula for financial success in your life. Number one, focus on a single, clearly defined purpose as your overriding life goal. Number two, make achieving the goal your all-consuming desire. And number three, pursue it with persistence and faith. This is literally one of the most transformational books I have ever read. Once you master your mind, it's time to change your life through creating better habits. In Atomic Habits by James Clear, you will learn that small changes lead to massive results. You don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the levels of your systems. Build better habits and success will follow. Simply knowing that you need to build better habits isn't enough to be successful. In Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Covey argues that there are seven behavioral habits that will help you succeed in life and in business. They are as follows. Take initiative, envision the life you want, prioritize the important over urgent, seek mutual benefits, listen and understand others first, collaborate and create possibilities, and practice self-renewal. Understanding which habits to build is so crucial and literally helped me to understand what to focus on, but the compound effect by Darren Hardy helped me to understand that executing my habits every single day will build upon itself, kind of like compounding interest. Compounding is a powerful way to change your life. Little consistent daily efforts can lead to massive results year after year. Spend time developing your daily habits that will ultimately equal the life you want for yourself. When it comes to actually getting rich, the same guiding principles have been around for centuries. In The Richest Man in Babylon, we learn what these time-tested principles are. The Richest Man in Babylon is a beautiful novel about a man named Arkad and his journey to wealth. The book is written in parables and details how Arkad became the richest man in Babylon by following core principles of paying himself first, living below his means, putting his money to work, and getting competent financial advice. Bringing the advice back to modern day, however, is important, and that's where I turn to the man himself, Dave Rance. Dave's book, The Total Money Makeover, is a modern practical guide for taking control of your finances. The key takeaway here for me is that your financial situation is the result of your behavior. Live differently than everybody today so you can live differently than everybody tomorrow. Start on the steps of financial freedom right now. Save $1,000, execute the debt snowball, boost your emergency fund, save for retirement, save for college, pay off your mortgage, and enjoy your money. See, taking control of your finances is the only way to retire on your terms. When I was young, I thought I would have to work for 40 years in corporate, but when I read Early Retirement Extreme, I was literally blown away by the FIRE movement. Financial independence, retire early, or fire for short, is the idea that you can make enough money and live frugally and retire extremely early. You do this by minimizing your expenses and staying away from debt, building skills that pay you really well and investing your savings. The Almanac of Naval Ravikant also describes this early retirement phenomenon in some detail, but connects the dots on building wealth and happiness. The reason why we should spend time building wealth is to become financially independent. 
And the reason why we should become financially independent is because this allows us to spend our time as we please, which ultimately leads to happiness and fulfillment. Money can produce happiness, especially if you focus on the most important things in life. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f by Mark Manson talks about the culture of consumerism and social media has us chasing the wrong things. Like Ravi Kant, we should be focused on the internal and focused on what is most valuable and important to us, like our hobbies, family, and life's purpose. This is the only way to make our lives enjoyable and make real money. Once we figure out what's most valuable and important to us, it's time to dedicate our lives to learning. In an ever-growing competitive world, the people who can continue to learn hard skills can extract more dollars. Skills pay the bills. It's time to know how to learn and how to learn fast. Ultra Learning gives you practical examples of how people have learned four new languages in the same year or learned how to write code and build software. These are skills that can be monetized and turned into long-term wealth. Learning fast can only happen when you are optimizing your life around distractions. In the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, he describes that this world is full of distractions and our ability to cut out the noise will help us become more productive and ultimately spend more time developing high value skills and high value money. Similar to deep work, the art of getting things done is another system for you to actually execute and be more productive. The book and system described will help you be aware and in control of your entire workload and put tasks and notes into a system that really just frees up your mental energy. This mental energy can be used for working on the most important things that will build your financial future. But with all the possible things you could be doing, how does one go about choosing what to work on? People are always doing too much and trying to be all things to all people. Essentialism helps you understand that you need to focus on making money and build skills and you can't do that if you're spread too thin. Learn to say no. If you can't say no to the non-essential things in your life, you will never have the time or energy to pursue the truly important things in your life. So Good They Can't Ignore You is another book from Cal Newport that challenges the idea that you should follow your passion. I'm gonna say something crazy here, but following your passion doesn't always lead to happiness and success. Instead, focus on improving your skills because the best way to love what you do is to become highly skilled. Be the best accountant, be the best nurse, be the best technician, and the passion, love, and money will follow. The book, The Unfair Advantage, expands upon this point. We all know that starting a business is one of the best ways to begin the journey of long-term wealth creation. But to have success, you must focus on your unfair advantages. Here's some quick examples of what an unfair advantage is. Lots of money or valuable assets like stocks and real estate. Knowledge and education, both formal and informal. Location and timing. Interpersonal skills, basically communication and selling prestige, and social connections. All of these can be turned into leverageable advantages to build businesses. Look, if you don't have any leverageable skills, please don't worry. And if you don't have any unfair advantages, you can always start small. In The $100 Startup, it outlines six steps to launch a micro business and how you can do it for as little as $100. This is how we got our start into the moving business and eventually grew it to $800,000 per year. But the next book was truly transformational for me and helped me understand what it means to be truly wealthy. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is arguably one of the most important books to building wealth that I have ever read. The high level lessons are as follows. Number one, the rich don't work for money, money works for them. Number two, buy assets, not liabilities. Number three, reduce taxes through corporations. And number four, overcome your mental obstacles. Building businesses and working for myself will lead to a higher likelihood of wealth than working for a business for the rest of my life. This book helped me realize that I'm in control of my financial future. And that word, control, is very important. If Rich Dad Poor Dad is the Michael Jordan of personal finance books, then the million dollar fast lane is Scottie Pippen. In the book, it tells you that all wealth creation is a factor of how much control you have over your finances and how you use time to make money. If you spend more than you make, you will create debt and spend your entire life paying debt instead of paying yourself. If you leverage your time to create passive income, you will eventually create freedom. If you wanna learn investing, then the next couple of books are gold mines. 
The little book on common sense investing talks about how day trading and investing into individual stocks increases your risk. If you're not a seasoned value investor and understand the underlying securities that you invest in, then you are gambling and not investing. The majority of us need to invest in traditional index funds and hold them indefinitely to decrease our risk and to diversify. An index fund is a broad market fund strategy that allows us to invest in the whole market like the S&P 500 or NASDAQ. A random walk down Raw Street also follows these concepts up with more strategies that you can employ. Investors are always better off putting their money in passively managed index funds, but in case you need to understand how to invest, this book offers high level guidance to purchasing stocks. But sometimes we need more than just a little high level guidance. We need guidance on what works. And this is where we turn to Ben Graham and his book, The Intelligent Investor. Warren Buffett credits Graham to his fundamental knowledge of investing. And this book is key for anyone that's interested in pursuing stocks. The key lessons are as follows. Buying a stock isn't just something you trade, it's a piece of ownership in a company and to understand the real value of that stock, you must understand the value of the company. Also, when you buy, ensure you have a margin of safety built into the price at which you buy the stock at. If the business is worth $100 and you can buy it at $40, then something good will happen to you. After we spent time building a solid foundation and getting our hands on our first $100,000, it's time to take it to the next level and make it to millionaire status, which involves the best knowledge on building businesses for ourselves. The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki is the sequel to Rich Dad Poor Dad. The key to generating wealth is through developing assets and the quadrant helps us understand the most effective way to developing assets. The left side of the quadrant is the least efficient way, which is to be an employee or to be self-employed. The right side of the quadrant is the most effective way, which is to be a business owner and investor. These two categories of the quadrant are where you can develop passive income, i.e. not trading time for money. This changed everything for me when I started thinking of ideas on how I was gonna escape the rat race. You have to build assets and the world's wealthiest people understand this but the unfortunate truth is that in order to do this, you must go to war and fight for these scarce resources. The 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene is one of the best business and strategy books ever written. Look, business is war, and you need to equip yourself with all of the strategies of your opponents to make sure you come out on top. 33 Strategies of War will help you identify when you're being placed in a good position or a bad position. Knowing things like this will help you to protect yourself and your business. In Zero to One, Peter Thiel argues that social progress requires technological progress and that the world benefits from startups that continually innovate. Build new technologies versus new ways of using existing technologies and that is what will help advance the world in a positive direction. But every business doesn't have to focus on innovation. Some businesses just need to grow as much as they possibly can in the market that they operate in. This is where we turn to Traction by Gino Witt. Every business needs an optimal operating system that controls people, process, and product. It starts with the vision and then cascades down to the practical processes that help scale your business. Traction is a guide to any new entrepreneur that wants to scale the business that they've created. The Lean Startup builds upon the ideas in Traction and talks about how the best startups in the world understand the ultimate goal is to quickly learn what their potential customers want and what they are willing to pay for. The startups that succeed are the businesses that learn how to solve their customers' problems with the fewest resources possible. The reason we need to build fast is because we want to learn fast about what customer problems are so we can create new markets. This concept of new markets is explained in great detail in the book, The Blue Ocean Strategy. Anybody can create a business that competes in a crowded market. The problem with this approach is that businesses will never reach scale because the competition is too fierce. They are operating in a red ocean full of predators and big fish that dominate the waters. With a blue ocean strategy, you don't need to compete. You've created a business or product that has created something new and fresh, and there are little to no competitors. 
Blue Ocean strategy is one strategy, but ultimately it's not the only strategy. Playing to Win is literally my favorite book on business strategy, and it provides a framework for how to develop a winning strategy for your company. It illustrates a model called the Strategy Cascade, which has five core elements in crafting business strategy. Not having a winning strategy is kind of like flying the plane with no sense of direction. Eventually, you'll just run out of gas and not land in your desired location. Once you have a strategy crafted, it's time to produce the results you want. In the book, 12 Months to $1 Million, Moran talks about the need to create and sell three to five products that generate 25 to 30 sales per day at or around $30 each. He goes over practical steps to identify the products, launching the business and generating sales. This is one of the most practical books to develop a million dollar per year business, so take plenty of notes. The third category is from one million to $10 million plus, and in this category, we're focused on building your people skills, personal development, and pattern recognition. Crucial Conversations is a book that will help you with your one-on-one -on -one interactions. When building a business, you have to know how to deal with and handle people. In Crucial Conversations, you will learn that we as people tend to behave our worst at the most critical moments, and that these conversations can ultimately make or break our ability to be successful long term. Learning how to handle Crucial Conversations effectively is the key to successful business relationships and careers. Thinking Fast and Slow is another book about human behavior, and it details the different cognitive biases that we have and how they affect decision making. Once we identify these biases, we can start to break down decisions and ask ourselves different types of questions to arrive at the best decision. When I was growing my moving company, I didn't pay attention to cognitive biases, and it ultimately led me to make some really, really poor decisions and that ultimately led to the end of the company. Decision making is crucial for not failing, but getting people to see your vision is crucial for success. This is where we turn to how to win friends and influence people. Understanding how to deal with people is one of the biggest factors to business and financial success. There are core principles that will help you achieve understanding and ultimately getting buy-in from business partners, investors, and employees. Appeal to the other person's interests and learn how to make them feel important. This book helps you build these skills in a practical way that doesn't come off as manipulative. A lot of your ability to make millions will be in the way you get people to get on your side, like getting them to invest in your business idea or getting them to share your influential project with an influential person in your industry. In Pitch Anything, you will learn that appealing to a person's crop brain or their gut or emotional side can make successful pitches and dominate a conversation. Figure out what the crop brain wants to hear and you can tailor your communication to win deals and build influence. But but being able to pitch your business or idea must start with understanding the purpose behind the idea. Start With Why by Simon Sinek is the perfect book to understand this theory. This book covers everything you need to know about creating an organization that put its values at the center of its business. Great businesses know why they're doing what they're doing, and they use the mission to guide all of their decisions and strategies. Sinek introduces the concept of the golden circle to reveal that when you start with why, everything else falls into place. And by everything else, I'm referring to money and results. Once the business knows the why, it's time to measure the things that will lead to the outcome that you desire. In Measure What Matters, you will learn how to develop OKRs, which are objectives and key results. Some of the largest businesses in the world run on OKRs and it's how they constantly measure and improve their business finances. So I've talked a lot about key concepts of communication and selling, but the next four books may be the only books you will ever need to build multi-million dollar businesses. The E-Myth by Michael Gerber is one of the greatest books written on entrepreneurship ever. Everything you need to know about being a successful entrepreneur can be captured in one key sentence. Work on your business, not in your business. Gerber describes what it truly means to be an entrepreneur and what you need to do to move from someone that's on the front line executing the small tasks to someone who is strategically managing and controlling the future of their business. Businesses forget sometimes that you're in business to make money and making money means earning profits from the products and services. 
In the book, Profit First, you will learn that paying the business first ensures that you will make money with your company and build a sustainable long-term business. Profit First is basically a business-specific version of The Richest Man in Babylon, and it really helps to outline real-world examples of how to keep money in your business. Building a company and making it well off is a pretty normal achievement. But getting to great requires detailed plans and time-tested proven strategies. In Good to Great, Collins analyzes the characteristics of some of the most well-named corporations in America to see if there are identifiable patterns of greatness. He looks at companies like Kroger, Walgreens, Wells Fargo, and discovers that there are patterns to greatness and that all great companies follow these patterns. If you recall in the first book, The Psychology of Money, it's important to be aware of patterns of behavior and strategy if you want to increase your odds at making a large amount of money. The great companies pay attention to patterns and obsess over finding new patterns. If you recall in the books Cash Flow Quadrant and Which Rich Dad Poor Dad, the ultimate goal is to build cash flow generating assets that bring cash to its owners. And in order to bring cash and wealth back to the business owner, you must be a business that can be sold. In Built to Sell, you will learn what that means and how to build sellable companies to generate the most wealth you possibly can. Some of the wealthiest people on the planet built businesses that were ultimately sold off to either the public markets or big investment banks and private investors. Learn how to build something that can sell to them and you will most certainly secure your wealth. If there was any book that stood out to you, please leave a comment about it down below and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. This has been a long video and there's been a lot of value given here, so I just want to say thank you for stopping by and watching the video. Until next time.